wonderful. Behold the brand new video game IP. It's something many gamers claim to desire. But in an industry dominated by big game sequels, even a new title with rock solid mechanics isn't guaranteed success. It's the same conundrum now faced by the wonderful 101 for the Wii U. Developed for Nintendo by Platinum Games, the wonderful 101's pedigree includes the brains behind Capcom's old Clover Studios. It's the same studio that produced memorable and for the most part critically acclaimed titles such as Okami, Beautiful Joe, and God Hand that, for some reason or another, didn't quite set sales charts ablaze. It's quite a shame really as those games provided a refreshing experience in an industry that can be quite content in maintaining the status quo and rehashing the same safe ideas. With the wonderful 101, Platinum holds true to form and releases yet another game that's different from the norm. Best described as a cross between Beautiful Joe and Pikmin, the Wonderful 101 brings together a large gaggle of Earth's mightiest heroes to combat the alien threat known as Geth Jerk, which, by the way, would also be a great name for a heavy metal band. Fueling the hero's fighting prowess is their ability to unite with each other as well as ordinary citizens to form giant weapons that can be used against the alien evildoers. By using the Wii U tablet or the right analog stick to draw patterns, for example, players can generate giant fists, swords, hammers, pistols, bombs, and even gliders. This aspect of the game can be quite fun in both the solo story mode and the separate multiplayer mode where I had one of my cousins chuckling with glee as he experimented with various scribbling patterns to generate all sorts of weapons while playing for the first time. In addition to both regular and beefed up attacks, players also can unlock moves such as an evasive maneuver and the all-important jello counter well, at least that's what I call it, which can help turn the tide of battle against the game's sturdier opponents. In fact, it's the only way to create openings when battling certain foes at times, lest you want to end up with not-so-wonderful consequences. This makes the Wonderful 101 great for fans of technical beat-em-ups who want their games to require a certain level of skill. The story, meanwhile, doesn't take itself too seriously, featuring a campy, tongue-in-cheek superhero tale that harkens back to the glory days of Adam West. You can also play the game off TV on your Wii U tablet. While lovers of technical fighting will adore the Wonderful 101's gameplay, however, it can also serve as the game's Achilles heel. I say that because the game can be too technical for some, making the learning curve for casual players a bit steep. When fighting against big bosses or groups of strong foes, for example, the multitasking required can be quite daunting as you try to navigate the battlefield while drawing shapes and lines for your weapons dodging, looking for attack and counter opportunities, and rounding up any stray group members at the same time. The fact that the game opted to use new characters that aren't as recognizable as Nintendo's popular characters, which this game was actually originally conceived for, also means mindshare for the average person won't be as high. It's certainly a classic darn if you do, darn if you don't problem for Nintendo, which sometimes gets accused of overusing its characters but then risks losing sales by going the original route. Ultimately. What you have with the Wonderful 101 is a technically solved game that serves up a refreshing and new experience while putting a premium on the gaming skills that define those hardcore classics from the 80s and 90s. The question now is, will today's average gamer and its younger generation of players literally and figuratively buy this approach? The answer to that will determine whether this game gets its own wonderful sequel or becomes another new IP that ends up as a one-shot deal. Yeah,